So to find a particular solution, you're going to start just like we've been starting all of our other problems. You're going to find the general solution um, to the differential equation, and then you're going to plug in the initial condition that they give you. So let's say that they tell us f prime of x is equal to 1 over x squared. They put a condition on there that x has to be greater than 0. Um, that's just restricting the function um, for us. It really has no impact on taking the derivative or the antiderivative, it's just a, a domain restriction there. Okay, so we want to find um, f, so we need to integrate both sides here. So the antiderivative of the derivative is the original function. It is big F of x. All right, the antiderivative of 1 over x squared would be negative 1 over x plus c. Now, if you need to take a few more steps to do that, that's fine. If you need to rewrite it and then, you know, add the exponent, divide by the new exponent, rewrite it, that's fine. I'm just kind of skipping that step there. Okay, so that's the general solution right there. But we want the particular solution. We are told that big F of 1, 1 being our x value, is equal to 0. So when our function is equal to 0, the x value is 1. We're looking for c. So we've got 0 is equal to negative 1 plus c. We're solving for c, so we add 1. So 1 is our c. That means our particular solution, big F of x, is negative 1 over x plus 1. Now, I don't know if they would. Um, but technically, you could get a common denominator there and rewrite that. I don't know if they would or not, uh, but just to jog your memory of doing that, that would give us uh, big F of x is equal to x minus 1 over x if they were to combine those. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at another one. Uh, we're told g, big G prime of x is equal to 2 over the square root of x. And our initial condition is g of 9 is equal to 10. So same thing, we're going to integrate both sides with respect to x. So big G of x is equal to, um, I'm going to rewrite this one before I try and take the antiderivative just because it's, got negative exponents and fractions, and it's just better if we rewrite it first. Okay, so um, the 2 just stays because it's constant multiple. Add 1 to our exponent, that becomes 1 half. Divide by the new exponent. Don't forget your plus c. This is why you can't forget the plus c, because when you have to find particular solutions, you've got to have that plus c right there, or you can't do it. All right, now be careful with this fraction and the constant in front. 2 over 1 half actually gives us 4. Okay, those do not cancel. It gives us 4. x to the 1 half plus c. That's the general solution. We need the particular solution. So our x is 9, our y is 10, so our function is equal to 10 when our x is 9. Remember that one half power is the square root. It is not half of nine, so that's four times three. So we subtract 12 from both sides. Negative two is our C. So our particular solution under this initial condition is four X to the one half minus two. And if you wanted to rewrite that as the square root of x, that's fine, because okay, that's how the function originated. All right, I know I have two textbook problems right there, but we'll go back to them. I want to do another particular solution example, example six. Uh, this time, though, they start with the second derivative, okay? They start with the second derivative. They tell us that the second derivative of our function is 2x. They give us an initial condition for the first derivative and an initial condition for the original because they're wanting us to find the very original function. So we've got to start with 
f double prime of x is equal to 2x. So if we integrate both sides of that with respect to x, the antiderivative of the second derivative is going to take us back one step to the first derivative. The antiderivative of 2x is x squared. Don't forget your plus c. Now, before we can um, do this again to get to the original, we need to find the particular solution for our first derivative. So they tell us that the first derivative is equal to negative 2 when the x value is positive 2. So we subtract 4, so negative 6 is our c. So our particular solution for the first derivative is x squared minus 6. We want the original though. We don't just want the derivative, we want the original. So we're going to have to integrate again with respect to x. The antiderivative of the derivative is the original. The antiderivative of x squared is x cubed over 3. Antiderivative of negative 6 is negative 6x. Don't forget your plus c. Last step, let's find our particular solution. The function is equal to 2 thirds when x is equal to negative 1. So we've got 2 thirds is equal to negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. I'm going to go ahead and add that 1 third because that's going to give me a whole number on the other side. 1 is equal to 6 plus c. So our c is negative 5. So our original function is x cubed over 3 minus 6x minus 5. The second derivative of that function is 2x, and it satisfies those two initial conditions that they gave us. Okay. So really, it's no different than the, the first two examples we did. We just have to do it twice because we started with the same group. Okay, we have to find a particular solution plus. Alright, so 